Mm. Hurts, man. My eyes are red. You got me all emotional out here. Psych, no, but what's up, YouTube? Last time I talked to you guys was... When was it? It was my barber school vlog, which was my last day of barber school. And I kind of took you th through the entire year, gave you a recap, showed you some pictures. Showed you what God showed me, what I've learned, things like that, you know. But I've been out of barber school for a month now, and I have some exciting news because today is Saturday night, which is why I'm super tired. I kind of cut hair all day, did something with the fam. And now right now, it's about 10.30. No, actually, it's like 11. And I'm just tired, which is why I was yawning. But anyways, it's Saturday night, and I actually take my state board test this Tuesday in Columbus, Ohio, and I'm super lit for that. So, uh, you know, pray for me, guys. Because this is definitely the next step in my journey. You know, I've been cutting hair for about three and a half years now. So this is definitely like a, a moment that I've been waiting for since I started. So I can be in the shop, you know, with no worries. I can have my license and, you know, really start to do this for real. Instead of out of the basement, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, pray for me, you know. Drop a comment, take a look, something. Because it's this Tuesday. But let's get back to it because today I actually have a haircut tutorial for you guys. It is a, what is it? It's a low poly fade. I'm gonna do some sheer work on top, show you the processes <clears throat> that I use for that. And then I'm gonna use the air compressor on the beard and on the hairline to enhance the haircut. But yeah, stay tuned for the haircut because it's gonna be really lit. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and let's get to it. My dude Sammy's out here looking real lost, real rough, but we're gonna go ahead and get them together. And uh, on this client specifically, I usually do a low fade just because it fits his head a lot better, especially, you know, with that colic on the right side of his head, if you can see it right there. But with a low, a low fade, I usually start in the back because it makes it way easier to make the, the fade consistent and the drop real nice so it's not crooked. And it, it looks real round and, you know, the shape, it just complements his head. And right here, what we're doing is we're balding it all the way out. And uh, we are going to go ahead and use the Andy shavers on his head here in a moment. But with the shavers, what you want to do is you kind of want to let the shaver... You know, do what it does. You don't want to press too hard. You know, just let it go over the hairs without applying too much pressure because when you apply, apply I can even talk, when you apply pressure, like too much pressure, that's what causes irritation and a lot of time can cause uh, ingrown hairs and bumps and you know, you definitely don't want that, so. Now it's time to get blurry. So right here I have my clipper all the way open. And I'm uh you know I'm following the shape that I made with the bald line to make my first guideline. And you know, I'm just uh yeah, just making that that first guideline, keeping it real nice and organized. So the way I get rid of the line in between that first guideline and the bald line is I go into it with the clipper closed and I go up a good distance, you know, cause you really do want to get rid of that line. And then I'll, I'll gradually open it as I get towards the top of that first guideline. And then, you know, by the time you get there, it should be pretty much out, but you might have to go back in detail, which is what I'm doing here. So right now I'm just playing with the lever, just trying to get rid of that line. And I'm just going into the beard right now. Since we're already there and we have the clipper open, we just might as well just blend into the beard, save some time. But for this uh, second guideline, the second step, third step, if you want to say that, I have my one guard all the way open. And you, we're making that next guideline and we're keeping it neat and organized and still following that shape of a, of a low drop fade, mid drop fade, whatever you want to call it. But instead of getting rid of that line that's in between the open and the one guard, I'm going to blend everything above that. So I'm going in right here with my number three, kind of blending into what's on top. I'm not making any lines here. 
I'm just kind of uh, flicking out and, you know, kind of debulking, if you would say so. And right here, I have my one and a half guard all the way open. And I'm going into that line that's in between the one open and the three. And I'm flicking out and then, you know, again, it's kind of debulking, blending, thinning, whatever you want to call it, school terms. And then I'll close it as much as I need to get rid of that line in between the one open and that three. And this, you know, you might have to detail a lot more with this part, but I think I pretty much get rid of it here. So this is closed. And then, you know, I'll open it as I go up and just try my best to get rid of that line. And right here, we're going back to that line that I left. And this is my half guard all the way open. And I'm uh, I'm definitely going into the line and I'll close it as needed, you know, to, to bring everything together. This is kind of where the fade, you kind of see it come to life. And obviously, you know, there's gonna be detail work needed after it, but for the most part, this is the foundation of the fade. And this is my half guard. And I'm just playing with it, getting that line out of there. And on the other side, we're gonna follow the same step, same procedures, going all the way open. And this is where I'm connecting the left side with the right side that I just completed. Usually when I'm doing a haircut, you know, I'll do it all together, you know, fluidly. Like I'll do open and I'll take the line out throughout the entire head. But for video purposes, I'll do one side and then the other, just because it's way easier to record and stuff like that but you know i'm going in closed opening it gradually as i get to the top of that guideline and detailing as needed you know honestly the fading steps are really simple it's just a matter of doing them over and over the repetition the practice and you know eventually something just happens and it clicks and it just gets way easier Hey, so recently guys, I just hit 100 subscribers, you know, which is super dope. You know, it happened pretty quickly, honestly. You know, the first video I ever posted on this channel was, you know, almost a year ago. And it got like 1.3K views, but you know, it took some time. And then it took eight months after that video for me to post another one. But you know, I'm hoping as I, I post more consistently, you know, that the videos will get more exposure, that the channel will continue to grow. And then, you know, go from there. I'm definitely going to upgrade on the quality of the videos, the equipment that I use to record and stuff like that. But I'm super excited to see, you know, where this goes. Because YouTube is, is where I learned, you know, this craft where I learned a lot about this industry from people like Chris Basio. So, no, listen, time out. Tell me why on my last haircut tutorial, which was the mid fade with the waves and I used the color enhancements. Tell me why Chris Basio commented on it. Bro, I was so lit when that happened. I was like, let me find out. But uh, man, it was super encouraging just to see that, you know, he viewed my video and took the time to respond on it. So Chris, if you're watching this video, I just really want to thank you for, you know, that encouragement. It really means a lot. But uh, yeah, I really want to give back because this is how I learned, was through YouTube, through people like Chris Basio, 360 Jeezy, E. Jones, and, you know, heck of other people. But, you know, this is kind of me giving back to, to the foundations of where I learned the basics of barbering. And then, you know, obviously Instagram helped and uh, following all those accounts. But, yeah, man, I'm super excited to see where this channel goes. This half guard in my fading process is really what brings everything together. And then, you know, obviously after this, you know, I do a lot of detail work as I explained in my other videos. I like to get through my steps as quickly as possible and then focus the majority of the time on, 
you know, detailing the haircut. And that's what really takes it from an average haircut to a great haircut, depending on how much pride and effort and detail work you put into it. So for the detailing part, this is kind of different from my other videos because I recently just picked up the Masters again, the OG days. These are the first pair of clippers that I really started to learn with. But, uh, you know, these really help stretch out the blend because ma the reason I stopped using Masters is because, you know, they're not good at taking a lot of hair off at once quickly, which is kind of why I switched over to the seniors. But I mean, as far as detailing, they're really great to stretch out the blend and allow it to become a lot blurrier, so. So finally, some sheer tutorial, but I start off with the middle guideline. As you can see, I have it pulled up and then there's a left and right section. So I start off by pulling the middle section all the way up and cutting the desired length off. And I'll follow that line all the way to the back of the head. And then I'll comb over that middle section all the way over to the right. And I'll, I'll move left to right with these. So I'll, I'll grab a section. And then that hair that I cut off with the middle guideline, I'll follow that all the way to the right. And it just allows me to focus on hair by hair. So it's a lot more even cut. I'll comb it over, pick it up, follow that guideline. And you know, cut that excess off. Shear work for me, it's all about sectioning. I'm not the best at it. I'm honestly really learning from people like Chris Basio. But moving on to the left side, I'll grab that middle section again, you know, sectioning it off and then combing it over to the left. And then I'll do the same exact thing on the opposite side. So I'll comb it over, pick it up, comb the rest of the hair out the way, and then follow that middle guideline all the way over to the left. And then keep it real consistent. A lot of clean little cuts and then I'll follow that all the way to the front. And then to cross check it, I'll take a uh, horizontal uh, sections and then this will help me to make, ensure that, you know, the, the cut on top is even. And then I'm using 245 by your very own Chris Basio. And I'm taking about a dime size, you know, emulsifying it in my hands, making sure, you know, that it's real melted because the way it is in your hands is the way to apply to the hair. And then I apply it when it's wet <clears throat> just because it spreads a lot easier and it makes it a lot easier to style. And then for the diffuser, because he has he wants a curly style on top. We're not really blow drying and giving volume or anything like that. We kind of want to dry it in place without blowing it everywhere and causing frizz. So the diffuser just kind of diffuses it and it allows the heat to dry the hair without really blowing it everywhere. And it makes the curls, you know, real defined and they look a lot better. All right, so now on to the lineup. And he does like his widow's peak cut off. He doesn't like the widow's peak. So we do line that portion of the hairline up and then, you know, again, I start in the middle and then move left and right, keeping it real natural, but also getting it as straight as I can without, you know, pushing it back too much. So I start on the left and I move to the right. And it is a lineup, so you always do want to stand in the front. And I'm not being a hypocrite. The reason I'm not standing in front is obviously because I'm recording. But if you are doing a front lineup, you should stand in the front because... You know, if you do it from the side, it can look straight from the side, but when you stand in the front, it's going to look lopsided. And then for the C cup area, the arches, you know, I start at the top and then go to the bottom and then meet it in the middle and that gives it the nice round shape. And then with the razor, you always want to stretch the skin to ensure that you don't cut them. <clears throat> don't apply too much pressure. Let the razor do the work and just get those extra hairs, you know, cut off so the hairline looks a lot sharper. The beard, we're not really taking length off of it. You kind of want to just clean it up, get the stragglers out the way. 
So I think this is a three guard and we're just going with the grain, getting all the hair sticking out. And then for the mustache, you want to keep that dark so it blends with the beard. So we did the one guard with. And then for the lineup, you know, we just lined above the lip. You don't want to go too high because if not, the mustache will look weird. And then clean up the top of the lip. And then with the razor, I always start at the, I start at the top of the beard because it allows me to, to keep it as high as possible, at least for me, and give it the nice round, you know, beard beard line. So it looks a lot fuller. And you don't want to push it down to the to the dark hairs. Even if it's light, you want to line it line it up as high as possible. Unless the client tells you to do different, but this is like my favorite part as you guys know it is my airbrush my air compressor and i do use kiss as a semi-permanent and there will be a video soon on the mixture that i use to do it but you know again you want to spray it on you it just enhances the haircut it still keeps it natural looking but it enhances the haircut and you can upcharge on it and make more money off of it which is super dope and then for the beard you know i got the card to keep the shape there and then we're just spraying it on, trying to keep it as natural as possible, filling in those light spots. Man, look at that, bro. Look at that. It just took the haircut to another level. You know, my client loves it. I love it. This is actually one of my favorite clients to cut because his hair is so dark. And the fade always comes out fire. But yeah, this is a low fade with a nice beard lineup with enhancements. Let me know what you think. Drop a comment and chill.